final stage of the jigsaw. Back axle is all done apart from the drive shafts. Uh, wheel bearings are all preloaded, discs are on, uh, more or less ready for its, uh, its drag links and A-frame. Um, again, while I was kind of messing around with this, I noticed the inside of where the A-frame pivot goes has been powder coated, so customer's going to need to grind that out uh, before he puts the A-frame on. But other than that, that's all right. Uh, front axle, got the swivels done. I've done so many videos on swivels, I didn't bother. Um, it's all fairly straightforward. Um, these are later ABS, so I think these are 88 or 89. Um, the axle is a it's a 38L um, axle, 00153. So it's quite an early um, ABS axle, this one. But uh, yeah, there we go. It's got the ABS. I'll put new pins, new swivels, new cup, new bearing on the swivels um, and I've got new CV joints and I'm going to reuse drive shafts and I've got new hubs because you remember the hubs were they're all right but I've seen better and then on the back side of them they've just been mullered and also there's a nasty mix here of early and late so for instance on the drive shaft front I found a pair of drive shafts which are suitable for the front axle but they're that one it's for an early axle, non-ABS. I don't know what these two are for. Uh, they may be back axle um, because there was a short period of time where back axle had drive plates like the front axle. But I haven't got drive plates, so I can't prove it. Now, before I do anything on drive shafts, um, on CV joints, especially brand new CV joints that are about to get lubed up, I'll make sure that they fit onto the drive shaft. Um, you'd be surprised how many versions of the CV joint won't fit. It does fit. I need to change the clip there. And also that the drive plate fits on the other end of it. Because again, there are different drive plates between 24 spline and 10 spline drive shafts and CV joints. So make sure you get the right CV joint. These are no longer made by um, the LB supplier. I think that either Borg and Beck or Lockheed, they're, they're just, you, you, you're stuck with one supplier. The only thing I'll suggest is make sure they look like they've been hardened. Uh, these have been hardened. I've seen them before now, the cheapo Chinese versions, which are not hardened, and they last precisely no miles. Um, so really, for this, it's just... Well, it's a straightforward assembly job. Um, there's nothing particularly nasty about it. Make sure you've got the spacer. Make sure that your locking ring that holds the CV joint onto the drive shaft is in place. This one is shagged, so I'm just going to take it off. It's going to fire into my face now, you watch. These things come off usually fairly easily, but uh, in this particular case, this is going to struggle. This is going to fight me all the bloody way. Um, just prise it over the top, there we are. Okay, so there's the old one. New one, supplied. Okay, so that can go in. Also, they supply some CV joint grease. And this stuff, I just squirt all over the balls. <laughs> um, yeah, before I put the drive shaft in. It's always worthwhile just double-checking the parts manual um, to make sure you have got all the components. So, for instance, on the long, on the... Um, which side are we going to be? We're going to be on the long left-hand side drive shaft. Remember, the space was missing when we took it all apart. Um, so I've had to order another one of those. Um, the spacer really just stops the shaft going too far into the CV joint. Lazy engineering, I guess. Or it could just be a consumable, uh, wearable component. Again, I've got no idea what's happened there. I haven't got another drive shaft. It's going in. Never seen anything like it. Um, but that has certainly dragged on something, hasn't it? And then we can work on drive plates, hubs, and so forth. So let's get these drive shafts in first of all. So that goes right on there, you see, nicely. Articulates nicely, not too wobbly, not too stiff. But ah. Right, so clip on there first. And I'm going to do this with the radio on. You don't need to watch that. So this, I believe, is the parts page um, for the axle that I've got here. So this is 
Range Rover 2 HA suffix. Doesn't give me an axle number, unfortunately, which is a shame. Um, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Uh, probably means that there aren't actually massive differences or change points uh, by axle. Um, but effectively, what they show me is a short half shaft with what looks like the collar on the front, which has thrown me slightly. But when I Google this part number, uh, so right hand shaft, RTC, uh, whatever that is, 6 or 5, 7, uh, 5, 4, not got the right glasses on at the moment. You could, you could see that, I'm sure. When I Google that, it shows me one of these. <laughs> Stupid fucking parts diagrams, eh? Um, so... What it then also shows me is we've got, um, inside the CV joint, we've got the lock ring, we've got the spacer, we've got a seal on the back of the swivel ball, which I've already put in position anyway. Then we've got the CV joint with the drive shaft going into the CV joint. So basically, that end goes into there. This is a really shit parts diagram. These guys failed at technical drawing bloody O-level, I can tell you. Um, so... Um, and also, it looks like it's got more, more than 10 splines on that end as well. And lastly, these bits here, they don't go on to there. No, they go on to there. <laughs> so, again, massive fail on technical drawing um, there. So just be aware, these parts diagrams, um, they're only as accurate as the idiot that drew them. Um, but the parts numbers are very useful. Now, some of these parts numbers have been superseded. The best thing to do is to Google the part number and see if it's available. Um, and then find the next nearest thing to it. So, as far as I can see, that is the right shaft. Um, I don't know how many more times I can say shaft. Right, we're having a little bit of fun with stub axles, because I've got the old stub axles, um, and they've got a bearing and a seal in there. And one of them had this on it as well, which I recognise. Uh, now, I've seen these before, and they fit like that. And I think these are like a plate that sits onto the front edge of the CV joint, if you get my drift. Um, I'm not sure, though, because I can't find any reference to it in the parts manual, Tip as is typical. Clank, 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 clank. Um, so there's a couple of things. I've put the seal in. Or the seals are FTC 840. I had a load of those. 33mm socket will bang it into the hub. And then you've got the bearing. Now the bearing is designed to run around that sleeve on the CV joint, so fairly important. Now this chappy here goes in here. Now I might need to press that in because I don't want to be bashing it, uh, but I do want it to go in. Um, and it looks like quite a tight fit and I've tried to remove the old ones. These are not a snug fit. Um, and as you can see, it's a caged bearing i.e. the rollers don't go right the way through it um, and I don't want to damage that so that's going to have to be pressed in I fear uh, probably end up using a 33 actually just use a flat plate because it looks like it's flush with the outside so let me go and push that in um, and then I need to investigate whether this is required or not because it was on one of the half shafts and not on the other and as you can see it does fit over that flange for now. <laughs> Fucking gibbon. Um, <laughs> it just, it's become instinctive. It's like a sixth sense. You've walked with it. You are broken. I've not lubed up the uh, CV joint yet because I don't want to attract any um, additional contamination in there. But um, yes, we are where we are at the moment. So then I've got the bearing in. Bearing goes on to sits quite snugly doesn't it and then we've got on the outside of this we've got the drive plates it's whether we need this or not and this is going to be the 64 million dollar question isn't it but it just presses in there it's going on right let me just uh on It'll come off again I'm sure but it just worries me that kind of that's what's needed um, I'm going to need to do some research I think before this goes together to establish that um, weird though isn't it it is weird 
if I take the old stub axle and put that on there, and I got that much kind of uh, drive shaft out of the end. Now, obviously, the uh, when the hub goes on, in fact, I've got a hub here. If I put the bearings into the hub, I could put the hub onto here and then put the drive plate onto the end and see how it all lines up, I guess. Might be the easiest way of doing this. Um, so let me fit a hub up with a pair of wheel bearings. I will inch forwards a millimetre. And this is kind of part of the problem you're going to find when you are picking up someone else's project that they have taken apart. Uh, it's not uncommon. Um, if they've taken the thing apart and just let, throw everything associated with that um, project into one box, then fantastic, but they haven't. Uh, what, what Phil's done is he stripped a couple of axles down um, and sent me um, a number of bits from each of those axles. And I've been able to do the jigsaw so far, but I just want to make sure I get these front hubs and drive shafts absolutely correct. So, wheel bearings next. They can go in dry. Hub on flange. <laughs> Richard. Um, and then <laughs> drive shaft on hub. Flange on hub. And to be honest, that looks right. So I think that this is needed. Because basically, on the end of the drive shaft, CB drive, you've got this slot here, which you shim up to ensure you're getting the correct amount of end flow between the CV joint and the drive plate. And you can see that that, if I was to tap this into place, using hand driver hammer number one, there's probably, I don't know, three or four mil in there. Look at that. So we've got that much room in there. Now, if I was to take that shim off there, then I'm going to have about two centimetres of stub axle hanging out the other side of this thing. So I'm going to have to see what the part number, find what the part number for that is and put it on. I think it's the only way I'm going to be able to resolve this. So the lesson here folks is don't assume parts manuals are correct and don't assume that the bits you've got are complete. Unless you've taken it apart yourself, um, I'm going to find one of those. I never found the part number, but I did find ha, another one on a spare diff. I don't know what this one is, but it's actually got some sort of thrust device in there, not the bearing. Um, I'm fairly sure the bearing is right for what I need. Um, but bear in mind, some of them have thrust washers. So I'm going to have to see now if I can get this peeled off here. It just looks like it's encased in grease and crap. That can go down there. Um, and... Yeah, I should be able to use that. Again, I'm going to just dry assemble the entire shaft, hub, uh, and everything, and just make sure that the distances, the tolerances are right. The main reason, by the way, you have to do this, is for these ABS axles, down there, you can see the stripy bits, uh, the, the, the splines, which the ABS sensor reads. Uh, it's the distance. You manage that distance by pulling this out. Otherwise, the shaft will just float backwards and forwards in and out of the differential.